Okay, so here's an option if you have a blanket handy at your house, but you don't have any other yoga props. You could use pillows too, like some throw pillows would work. But if you take a blanket and you can make it really narrow, so it just is like about as wide as your torso, or if it's a little too thick, you can open it up a little wider. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna roll your blanket up and then you have two options. Option one is you can go across so that it sort of just lifts your rib cage, or you can go long so that your head is also supported by the blanket. Now that's for the blanket. If you wanted to use yoga blocks, one block would go crossways like this, one block would go up like this, and then you can lie down over this so that your head is supported by a block block underneath your heart. So I'm going to go for the block one because it's a little bit bigger and it provides a little bit more um, sensation in that way. But the blanket also is really nice. Okay. So then you're going to lie down so that, oh, let me move over a notch, so that your shoulder blades are on the block and the block starts kind of just below the shoulder blades, maybe an inch or so below the shoulder blades. Um, <laughs> and then this block is going to go under your head got a clip so I'm gonna take that out of my hair first oh. and then I'm gonna lie down okay so then snuggle in the shoulder blades underneath you to a degree that seems appropriate you might want your legs completely stretched out you might want to do a little butterfly with the legs that's kind of nice if you want the inner thigh or you can put your feet on the floor right now I'm feel in this leg stretched out position, it's nice. Okay, so then let your mind sort of relax and settle where you are. And the good news is, is we're just gonna pause. I've got this essentially sunbeam <laughs> kind of coming in nice and bathing me in a bit of sunlight. And then your room might be a little bit darker. But you can just enjoy the sensation of yourself sort of settling in. We'll stay for about one more minute here just kind of you can roll your head a little bit side to side or let your arms drift out a little farther if that's available I'm taking a nice deep breath kind of letting my chest and my ribs expand and then as I exhale oh, I'm trying to relax a bit through the shoulders Let my arm bones get a little heavier. Hmm. Take a nice big breath. Let go with a big sigh. <sighs> And then, oh, we're gonna bring ourselves off of these blocks or off your blanket. So the blocks for me, I'm gonna take, you know, cause there's two of them, I'm gonna take one out from under my head first and then roll to the side to get the other one out. Okay, now, once you're off of the blanket or off of your blocks, you're just gonna pause for a moment and feel. So, oh, this is my favorite sensation. It's feeling my upper back spread out really wide and soft and oh, feels good. <laughs> and then kind of letting myself rock a little bit on the back. Oh, just to massage that same area. It's feeling really nice. Okay. So keep one leg relaxed and I'm going to leave my left leg soft and relaxed. And I'm going to take this 
right leg and hug it in. And then if you can draw it and, you know, and hold on to it, hold on to it. If you need to use a strap or just hold on to your pants to hold on to the leg, you can definitely do that as well. Just whatever is appropriate and comfortable for your body. All we're really here for is to let this kind of all snuggle in. So wherever it's snuggled in is good. And then we're gonna spin this foot. And we'll do some core work in a minute, but, <laughs> but for now, it's really all about the ankle joint and the hip joint. And go the other direction. And you can do some really big circles. I like to try to get all the way to the edges of my range of motion. And I do some that are a little faster. And then point and flex. Oh. Okay, so then we're going to flex the foot back and extend the leg up and maybe you let go of it because <laughs> your hamstrings are tight and maybe you hold on to your big toe because you've got a bigger range of motion and it feels kind of nice to let the weight of your arm pull a little bit down. Oh. All right, so we're going to let go of the leg, but we're going to keep it up here. We're going to curl up and you're going to draw um, your hands behind your head. So what you're doing with your hands is making like a little basket. And then you're gonna press your head into your hands so that the neck is nice and stable. Then curl the shoulder blades up by using the abs rather than the neck. And we're just gonna pause right here and then hover, if you can, that left leg up a few inches. Spread the toes out and just hold steady here for 10, nine, eight, seven, six. Hug in through the sides of the waist, four, three, two, one, and then bring that leg down and let this guy go. And we'll just give ourselves a little moment there. Okay, stretch that right leg out or whichever one that was. Hug the other one in. Oh, in this case for me, it's my left leg. Give it a little snuggle and then spin your left foot. Oh, feels nice. Loosen up the ankle joint, go the other direction. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why I make up songs. <laughs> Point and flex your foot a little bit. Uh. Oh, it feels nice. Okay, so then you're going to try pressing up through the heel and kind of letting that leg stretch. Maybe it's within a range of motion to hold on to the toe. Maybe you stay with the thigh or the calf muscle or you even let go. Oh, feels good. Last breath here. Mm. Okay, so we're gonna leave this leg reaching up towards the ceiling. I'm gonna put my hands behind my head, create a little basket, curl the shoulder blades up, Press the head into the hands, draw in through the sides of the waist, hover that right leg a bit, and hold it right here, curling in for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, hug the sides of the waist in, 4, 3, 2, 1, good, release, oh, that is fun, <laughs> I love core work, it makes me feel sunny. <laughs> All right, yogis, we're gonna do a little oblique work. So we're gonna hug the knees in, balance the, le the legs kind of so the knees are kind of over the hips. Take your arms out wide. Now, I need to move my blanket out of the way. Okay, so I'm gonna let my arms and my shoulders stay really stable as I take the legs over to the side, bring them around the middle, take them over to the other side. So you can hug in towards your armpit if you like, bring them around the middle, hug them in towards the armpit, Bring them around the middle, hug them in. So if this hurts your low back, don't go quite so far. It doesn't have to be all the way to the edge. We're just working the obliques. And we might also be traveling down our mat a bit. This is what happens to me as I do this, <laughs> as I wind up traveling. Okay, so we're just coming around, hugging into the corner, coming around, hugging it into the corner. Coming around, hugging it into the corner. We're gonna do it one more time. Hugging it in, hover right there, 
squeeze the thighs towards each other. Left shoulder reaches into the ground for five, four, three, two, one. Bring it around the center. Bring the knees over to the opposite side. Hold steady right there. Reach through the right shoulder for five, four. Squeeze the thighs together, two, and one. Bring it on back to the middle. Oh, okay, yogis. Now here's the question you have to ask yourself. Do I want to rock up and catch a couple of boat poses on my way to an all fours position? Or do I just want to lay here for a second <laughs> and then roll myself up into an all fours position? So if you want to rock yourself up and catch a boat pose, and maybe even a few of those, they're kind of fun. Oh, one more. <laughs> Oh, you could do it that way, or you could just come on up to all fours. Mm. Okay, yogis. So once you get yourselves to an all fours position, you will move your back around in ways that feel delightful to you. Okay. So it might be just the sort of rounded shape where you spread out across the upper back and curl the tailbone in, or it could be a shape, you know, just this opposite shape here where you sort of pull the collarbones a little bit wider, let the upper back drop in, decide how high you want that um, tilt of your pelvis or tailbone lift. Okay, so that could just be your two shapes. Or you can add like some little look over the shoulder, look over the shoulder. You could move the ribs through a circle. You can also take a moment to maybe turn one hand the opposite direction. And as you stretch into your cat back, lean backwards into it and give that wrist a stretch. And then do the opposite side. Especially if you're working a little bit more on your computer than you're used to. Mm. Oh. And then keeping those wrists in a stable or, you know, kind of all in, in one kind of position for long periods of time can be a little tricky. Okay, so we're going to take one leg. You can start with the right leg and we're going to tuck the toes under and stretch that leg all the way back. Now, just for a moment, I'm going to press back through my heel and then you're gonna roll over the top of the foot and roll back, press back through the heel. So roll and back and forth over one foot, back and forth. Ooh. It's nice just to give the toes a little lubrication. All right, so we're gonna stretch that leg back, take the opposite arm out and reach through into that spinal balance. Oh, then we're gonna take the leg and the arm out to the side. Don't hit your plants or your furniture. <laughs> and then you're gonna bring that leg all the way forward. So now you're in a lunge position. Now I'm gonna throw a couple blocks into my world just because it creates more stability. And then we're gonna do this kind of movement. So we're gonna go backwards so that now it's a little more on the hamstring stretch realm. And then we're gonna go forward. So now it's really feeling it in that front of the hip, okay? So go backward and forward and backward and forward. Okay, so just the vinyasa is moving between these two poses, right? Now, we're gonna pause at the lunge. So as you come forward, I'm gonna lose the blocks because now I'm gonna hold the pose and see it with extending through the spine, how does that feel? And then feeling the hip out here. And just hmm, deciding how much of that stretch is right and good and appropriate in the moment. I'm gonna take one more big breath and then we're gonna go back out and flirt with this hamstring stretch for a little bit. And maybe it's kind of early for drifting out into the full splits, but maybe that's something you can do no matter what. Okay, last breath here. Alrighty, so we're gonna switch. So that leg is coming back. And just before I get to anything else, 
I want to just pause for a moment and feel. So feel the side of the body you just did versus the side of the body you haven't done. Can you feel the difference in the pelvis and the spine or anywhere else for that matter? Okay, so we're going to take this leg all the way back, press through the heel, roll forward and backward over the toes. Forward and backward. I do about five or six of these just to lubricate the toes and stretch out through the calf. Mm. Okay, then we're going to take that leg up and then the opposite arm, draw in through the sides of your waist to help hold that. Nice long spinal balance. Then we're going to take the legs uh, out to the side, arm out to the side. Avoiding furniture <laughs> or pets. Good, bring it back. And then that leg is gonna come all the way forward for my lunge. Okay. So now, again, I'm gonna create the stability by adding these blocks to my world. And I'm gonna take my hips between this kind of almost to the half monkey and almost to the lunge. Just going back and forth a little. Pad up your knee that's on the floor to the, you know, to wherever it makes sense to do that. Oh. And I'm feeling out. So moving between these two poses gives me a chance to feel where the tight places are. So I can, as soon as I get here, I can feel that this attachment right here is tighter than the others, right? So I can notice that mm, my outer hamstring a little bit tighter. I might wanna roll my hip into that or away from it. So now I'm gonna to come to the lunge and pause. While I'm here, I'm gonna put my hair up because I know I'm gonna want that to happen. <laughs> and I'm also stretching my hip forward and allowing myself this kind of back bend shape that's giving me mm, that nice lungy stretch on the front of my right hip. Oh, whichever hip it is for you. So noticing even maybe there might be a tendency to lean. So just noticing that. And then as you exhale, we're going to take it back towards that half monkey. Again, feeling out the sensation of your hamstrings. Again, now noticing for me anyway, if there's been a change and there has been a slight change, I'm not feeling as much sensitivity in that muscle as I was when I started. I'm taking one more breath here. Okay, then we're gonna come back around. And once you've had a moment to sort of check in, oh, then we're gonna take ourselves to downward facing dog. And this might be your first downward dog of the day. It might be your 18th downward dog of the day. But in any case, adjust the arms there about shoulder distance apart. Once you're up, you can take a moment with the knees bent to sort of work in the shoulder girdle, work in those arm bones. Now, shoulder blades on the back and then hug the arms together and then really reach out through your hips, giving yourself a little walk if you like. Oh. Now, depending on how the situation is for your mat, you might want to walk your hands forward or you might want to walk your hands back or you might want to walk your feet in towards your hands. So I'm going to go backwards so that I put all the weight in my legs. And then while I'm hanging upside down, I've softened my knees so I can really let go through the back of my neck. I'm just releasing tension from my neck. Oh, okay, holding that steady, I'm going to shake my arms each just for a moment so I can concentrate on relaxing the individual shoulder. And then both hands together, I'm gonna to spin some circles with the wrists and go in the other direction. Now, if it's not comfortable to do this hanging upside down, you can do it standing up. So press through the palms. Oh. And then we're gonna take ourselves up halfway. So I'm gonna feel myself kind of snake my spine out and then exhale, bend and fold back over nice and round. Inhale, snake the spine out. 
Exhale, bend the knees, hold back over, shake everything out. And then one more time, we're gonna snake the spine out. And this time we're gonna come all the way to standing. If you need to roll it up, you can roll it up. And then, whoop. And then, oh. Take a moment to stretch when you get all the way upright. Now, we're gonna take the right leg and just swing it behind the left leg. And then I'm gonna grab hold of this right wrist and draw myself into this little side stretch. You can open the belly back or open the back up a little bit. Okay, come on back to the center. Give everything a little shake and see how it feels. Oh, that's pretty good. All right, so the left leg is gonna come back behind, so you've got a little wide base. Grab your wrist. And again, you might need to open a little bit more one direction or the other. And just feel yourself, give yourself that little side stretch. So I'm letting this hip kind of come open. Last breath, oh, and then come on back to the center. Okay, so we're gonna find a mountain pose. So first I start by relaxing everything. And then I'm gonna turn my toes so that they point forward, and my feet feel like they're about like right underneath my hips. Doesn't matter if they're actually there as much as it is that you feel that, right? Try to kind of turn everything towards the front. And then imagine that your tailbone gets really heavy, so you've got like a kangaroo tail or dinosaur tail. And there's a sense that the abs kind of pick you up a little. And then let your shoulder blades relax down your back. Now some people like their palms turned out, I don't. It makes me force my rib cage forward. And so do that if it's your deal. But let your you know, neck grow long, let the top of your head reach for the ceiling, don't lock your knees out. Just feeling mountain pose, so it's Earth Day. <laughs> and taking a moment just to mm, experience yourself as the Earth. And this sense of strength and sense of centered placement. Now if you've got room to reach your arms way out, you can do that. Otherwise you can come straight up the middle. Give yourself a little baby back bend if it feels okay to do that. Then exhale and fold forward, soft in the knees. Straighten the legs out if you like when you get there. Come up halfway and lengthen out. Exhale, fold. Now you might be stepping back into downward dog or going forward into downward dog, depending on your position on your mat. And then from downward dog, we'll come forward into a plank. Now you can maintain this full plank or bringing the knees down, create the uh, mo modified plank, right? So you want to create the situation that's gonna give you the best situation for your shoulders. We're gonna hold this plank for a three, two, one more, and then we're gonna lower down. So come in all the way or halfway down. You can come into a cobra pose or an upward dog. And then we'll take ourselves back through the plank and into downward dog. Now, once you're here, we're gonna pause for a moment and center that left foot. Right foot's gonna come up. We're gonna hook it over the back and then bring it in and round up and hug in. Stretch it out, hook it over. Bring it in, ha! Stretch it out, hook it over, and then we're gonna bring the pelvis level and sink into that standing heel, and then we'll step this guy forward. Now, we're gonna come to a high lunge. So get your leg into place, feel your balance. If you're needing a kind of interim, grab your blocks and see, do I have a balanced situation? And then come all the way up, right? Now there's a tendency for the pelvis to dump forward. If you can, pick that up. Press back through the heel and forward through the knee. Working with the stability that you've got <laughs> or don't have. Take it a nice deep breath. And then we're gonna exhale and bring both hands down. And then we're gonna see if we can play with this front leg. So I'm gonna use the blocks. So I'm gonna try to straighten out the front leg, press down through my heel. So I'm gonna get a little extra calf and then I'm gonna bend back into that lunge, bring my heart forward, okay? And then stretch the legs out straight, press down through the heel. Ooh, that's a big calf stretch, okay. And then one more time coming forward, bringing the heart forward. And then we're gonna take this back to down dog. Ooh, alrighty. Now you can make this more gentle 
by not doing dog or even coming to all four or coming to all fours and doing a little cat or you can come forward into your plank a little more gentle modified plank lower through the vinyasa of your choice and then take yourself back to down dog through your plank oh. and then take your left leg up again we're, i'm centering my right foot so i've got a nice stable base hook the leg over bring it in ha, hug it in hook the leg over bring it in ha, hug it in hook the leg over and then level pelvis reach into both legs sink into your heel and then step that leg forward again working your way into place for your high lunge finding that place where you can balance and then rise and maybe it's wobbly pick up the pelvis Ooh. hold steady <laughs> oh Feeling the places in your body that might have tightened up overnight. Hold and steady. Okay, so again, I'm gonna do this with the blocks. You can do it with higher blocks or lower blocks. If you don't have blocks, use something else. Books, pots, <laughs> Tupperware containers, whatever you got. So you're gonna straighten out the leg, press down into the heel on the back leg, and then bend it, come forward, lift the heart. Surfing back into that lunge, coming towards the split leg forward bend, heel going toward the floor. There's still space under my foot here. Maybe not for you. And then come forward. And then one more time, I'm gonna whoo, go into this deeper stretch. And then we're gonna come forward and come to downward dog. Okay. So, feel. Ooh, downward dog just gets better and better the longer I do them. So we're gonna come forward into that plank. You can maintain your full plank or your modified plank for five, four, three, two, one. We're gonna lower all the way down to the belly. Ooh. And then we're gonna work with some locust. Now, there's lots of different ways you can adjust your arms. Here's how I'm gonna work with mine. I'm gonna put my hands close to my waist when I do this to start with, the bottom of my hand doesn't completely touch the floor, but as I lift it will, okay? So we're gonna reach back through the legs, lift the legs, lift the torso, and as I come up, my palms go flatter, and I can pull backwards to create the opening in the chest, okay? So lower down, we're gonna do it again. Lengthen back, lift, draw back, and you can do straight arms too. Right on, and then come down. We're gonna do it one more time. So lengthen back, lift, and you can create a different shape with the arms if you like. Pulling the shoulders up and relaxing through the neck. See if you can get that chest up a little higher. Two more breaths. Last one, and then come on down. Now, if you want a little windshield wipers for your back, you can do that. When you're ready, you're going back to down dog. So you can press yourself back and into dog. Oh, what's happening down dog? So again, catching your dog, shaking things out, feeling where they landed us. So we're gonna take the right leg up. And again, I'm gonna bring the knee in, but this time across towards the elbow on the opposite side, lift. Bring it across, you might even be able to touch. Lift. Sink into that heel, step your foot forward. Now, for this one, I'm gonna to come to warrior one. So instead of staying up on the heel, I'm gonna bring the heel to the ground and then rise. I always like to make sure I've got the balance. <laughs> Press the feet into the floor, create this sensation of the pelvis really being drawn in both directions, okay? Stretching that apart. And then, keeping the torso pointed forward, <laughs> feeling myself find the balance we're gonna take the arms up and then we're gonna stretch forward and reach 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 and then let it fall <sighs> and then we're gonna roll this thing up so you can put a hand on your hip for stability or on your thigh you're gonna coil through the spine and then try to roll one vertebrae at a time up on top of each other 
taking your time. It's a little wobbly. <laughs> so nice big warrior one stretch. And then we're gonna lean out into it. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Fold over. And then adjusting, <sighs> hugging through the legs, drawing in through the sides of the waist a little bit. Roll up one vertebrae at a time. I like to do this with my eyes closed, but it, oh, it makes it wobblier. <laughs> All right, so then we're gonna take this oh, into that split leg forward bend again, but we're gonna keep the legs soft to begin with. I'm gonna stretch out like I did before. Now for me, it helps to bring this back foot in a little bit. And then I'm gonna turn all 10 toes forward. Blocks are nice if you've got them handy. And then bend the knee, go into the straight leg. Bend the knee, surf into the straight leg. I'm looking for the spot where I can send this heel back and still touch it to the ground. And where I don't get too sharp a sensation here, you can leave the knee a little bit. And then pausing with the split leg of forward bend and just breathing into it. Mmm, feels good to breathe. Now we're going to take this up one notch. So I'm going to take it to, it might be two notches. <laughs> I'm going to take this to a standing splits. So I'm going to come up, maybe one hop, maybe two. This leg is going to reach up. And then I'm going to see if I can balance without my hands on the floor. When I fall, I catch. Right? So reaching through this leg that's up top, it's a rudder. Good. Last breath here. And then I'm going to take that leg back and bring both my hands to the ground. Yeah, and then <laughs> I'm going to step back into downward dog and give it a jiggle. And if you want to, you can throw in your vinyasa here, coming forward into plank, lowering down, doing your up dog or your cobra. You can just hang with me and walk. Okay, so coming back to that three legged dog. On the other side, bring the leg across, bring it back, oh, bring it across, ha, huh. bring it back, bring it in, and step it forward. And again, depending on your body mechanics, you might have to do a little bit of finagling, but you're gonna drill, draw the heel toward the floor and come up for your warrior one. Again, I'm not squaring my hip forward, but I am trying to create as much as I can the ribs turning that way and finding the stable balance in my hips. And then finding that warrior one shape, rinse out your neck, <laughs> draw up a little bit through your abs. And then we're gonna stretch forward. Oh, keep reaching, keep reaching, keep reaching. Oh, when it gets here, soften. And then again, you for a little stability, you can put a hand on either leg. I'm using just a little bit of support to roll myself up one vertebrae at a time. Oh. It feels so good. <laughs> Stretch out, keep going. Ooh. And then we're gonna roll it up. One vertebrae at a time, drawn in through the sides of the waist to help provide support. Oh, okay, yogis. Okay. One more time, but this time we're gonna stay down. So we're gonna all oh, stretch out. And then, whew. I'm gonna pick up my feet, make adjustments so that I'm ready for this split leg forward bend. I wanna feel this heel touch the ground and then I'm exploring that hamstring stretch. Ooh, heel touches the ground. Oh. Ooh, that's sensation. Hamstring stretch. Oh. All right, so I'm gonna take one or two more breaths right where I am. Okay, so then we're going to turn this into our standing splits. Oh, and again, I'm going to lift that leg however high it'll go. See if I can take my hands off the floor and hold steady. <laughs> Prepared to catch as needed. Reach. Oh. Two more breaths. <laughs> Last one. All right, so bring your hands back down, take it back to down dog, and oh, take a moment to feel where you landed. 
Oh, that is some good stuff, y'all. Oh. All right, so we're going to come forward into plank. Hold in the plank. You can modify it for five, four, three, two, one. Lower in all the way down. Nice and slow. <laughs> and then we're definitely going to do a little, like a little bit longer back bend here. So reach through the legs and press them down. Lift yourself into a cobra with your back muscles and then slide your elbows underneath you to hold yourself there. Now we're still gonna do all this action. So I'm still gonna lift. I'm gonna take my glutes and kind of stretch them down so that it's like I'm trying to curl underneath the little curve of my glute and press my outer thigh down, okay? So the glute is drawing down and towards the ground through its connection to my IT band. Okay. So I'm not just hanging out here, I'm actively using the legs to kind of stabilize this pose. And if you feel like you wanna take this up a little higher, you can lift yourself up a little higher, that's fine. Just don't push with the arms, use your back and then hold yourself there. And so we're engaging the glutes and trying to get the lower part of the glute to fire and roll to the side. The fibers of the glute wanna go in this diagonal and we're trying to fire up those fibers. Okay, two more breaths. Ooh. All right, so we're gonna come down. Give yourself a moment. And then we're gonna take it back to down dog. Now, when you get to your down dog, oh, we're gonna take a moment. And again, settle the shoulders on the back. Press the heels towards the floor, feel where it landed you. And then you can jump up to your hands or walk your hands to your feet. Hang it upside down for a moment. Rinse out any tension from your neck. And then we're gonna float up to the halfway. Straighten out the legs, bend the knees. Oh, come over, inhale. Maybe straight legs, maybe just barely straight. <laughs> Fold over and we're coming all the way up. Now I'm gonna keep my knees bent this time. I'm gonna to try to roll, hug in, draw the sides of the waist in to support the spine, and then stack those vertebrae again. Okay, so I'm giving your mountain pose a little dance. Oh, oh. Okay, and then finding that mountain again. So I'm gonna hips distance apart with my feet. I'm gonna feel that tailbone draw down, feel everything else come in to support me. Shoulders can relax. <sighs> so again, we're gonna do a little side stretch. I'm gonna turn this way because it's easier to see. So I'm gonna take the left foot a little forward, my right foot back a bit more than I did last time. So now I've got quite a distance Right toes pointing at the diagonal this way, left toes pointing to the diagonal that way. Soften through the knees as you like. We're just increasing this just a notch. Grab that wrist a little, just so you have something to work with, and then stretch the side out. So, oh, I might need more bend in the knee, or I might need to adjust how long the feet are, or wide apart they are. Oh, take one more big breath, maybe open in the belly back. And then we're gonna come back to center. And again, notice where that landed you. Doing the other side, so I'm gonna step the right foot a little bit forward. Left foot's gonna come back quite a distance. I'm trying to find the right spacing for myself. Turning those toes to the diagonal in the front, toes to the diagonal in the back. Press nice and firm into the feet. Look for the side stretch that seems appropriate in the moment maybe more bend in a knee. <laughs> if it gets wobbly, catch him. And we're gonna take one more breath, maybe open in the belly back. Oh, and then we're gonna come back to center. Oh, give everything a little shake and find your mountain pose. And we're gonna sink this into a chair. So I'm gonna bring my 
feet a little closer in. Send the hips back. Keep the knees more over the ankles than over the toes and settle back. Now, you can put your arms up if you want to, but hands to the heart is also good. So we're gonna take a big inhale, lengthen down through the tailbone, twist a bit to the right. Inhale back, lengthen through the tailbone, twist a bit to the left, two more. Inhale, exhale, twist. Inhale, notice the inclination of the hip to go with you in the twist. Can you stabilize through your pelvis? Inhale, twist to the right. Now that one we're gonna hold. So again, there's a tendency to do that with the hips and the legs. Can you hold that together? And maybe your elbow comes all the way to your leg. Maybe instead you nestle that hand right in to the center. Your arm might come all the way up. You might leave a hand on your hip. You might keep the hands at prayer. So feeling the hip stabilize as you lengthen. Last breath here. Coming back to the center. Big stretch up. Oh, coming back to that chair. Okay, hips back, knees bent. Inhale, tailbone lengthens, come into the left. Inhale, back to the center. Tailbone lengthens, come to the right. Back to the center, long to the left. Back to the center, long to the right. Good, one more time, coming back to the center, twisting, avoiding that situation where the legs get out of place. Holding steady. Maybe that upper back will twist more. Maybe the hand nestles in somewhere. Oh, maybe it sinks a little deeper. <laughs> One more breath. And this time we're gonna come back to the center and fold forward because oh, the legs feel good. <laughs> and then you're either gonna jump yourself back into a plank or wander yourself out into down dog. You can finish that with the vinyasa or just hold that dog and breathe. Mm. <laughs> we're all gonna meet up in down dog, so you're adjusting the practice for you. And then we're gonna take that right leg and bring it up. Bring it towards your upper outer right arm. Ooh. Bring it back, it might touch, it might not, but don't worry about it. <sighs> Get as close as you can. Reach it back, we're gonna sink into that heel, level the pelvis reach, and then bring yourself forward. <laughs> we're gonna come to warrior two. So adjust the legs so that you've got the pelvis more turned towards the center. You can come into warrior two with a flourish <laughs> or not. <laughs> All right, so finding your hips in the right place, releasing tension through the arms and shoulders. We're gonna come back to reverse <laughs> and over to side angle. Don't worry, this is good. Come back to reverse, over to side angle. Oh, it feels good. So you reverse, and then we're gonna take this hand down, right? And we're gonna turn this into a half moon balance. So you could use a block, you can put your hand on the floor. You might need a couple of little wee hops. <laughs> catch yourself before you take your furniture out. And then get light, okay? To get light, we're gonna pull up with this hip and lift up with the abs. So you're holding on. If you fall, you catch with your foot, lift, Lift, <laughs> lift. All right, so we're gonna step back with this back leg and we're gonna take this front leg into a pigeon. So I'm gonna pick him up, shake him out, and then bring it forward. And ease into this pigeon. Now, for you, <laughs> this might be too spicy. And you can flip your bird upside down, y'all. It's possible. <laughs> this is one of my favorite yoga jokes. It's possible that you've been wanting to flip a bird at me this entire time. This is your chance. Mm. <laughs> so you can get closer to the ground. You can stay up a little higher. I'm kind of going for in between so that I've got a really intense stretch that feels appropriately intense. <laughs> We're gonna take two more breaths, maybe three. You can grab this foot if it feels okay to do. Oh, okay, nice big breath. And then you're gonna lean into this bent leg hip. We're gonna bring this back leg around. <laughs> Sit up tall, lean back. Now this leg can nestle over however far it goes. And then once you're twisting, come back up to a tall position. 
you put your hand down, look over the back shoulder. I like to right now take time to really make sure my upper back is twisting. And then I take my head the opposite direction and look for a sensation that feels like my neck is stretching. I'm gonna take this shoulder blade with this back arm and draw it down a little further. And that stretches this area where the lymphatic system drains. And I don't know if this is gonna help y'all, but the lymphatic system is part of our um, body's ability to kind of get rid of invaders and waste products. And so the more we can do to keep our lymphatic system humming along in a time where we might be exposed to all kinds of invaders, um, I can't imagine it hurts. <laughs> so just pausing for one more breath. And then we're gonna bring the head back to center, bring the torso back to center. And this is where, oh, pausing for a moment just to feel, you might decide to take yourself and roll over your legs, jump into chaturanga, do an up dog, do a down dog, or you can just join me in down dog. Oh, talking to you guys makes my mouth dry. All right, here we go. Ugh. So you've either done your vinyasa <laughs> or you've joined me in down dog. Hmm. So we're gonna take this left leg up and we're gonna bring it to the upper outer arm <sighs> and take it back oh. and to the upper outer arm <sighs> and take it back and give it a good long stretch. Oh. And then step yourself into your warrior two and you come up. Oh. <sighs> with or without dramatic flourish. Adjust your hips. <laughs> Come on back for reverse and over for the side angle. And back and the side angle because oh, that feels so good, you guys. <laughs> oh, it's nice. And then one more time, we're gonna oh, give that side angle a little love. And then we're either gonna oh, jump right in or ease our way in to our half balance, half moon balance. Oh, so we've got a new moon earth day happening right now in the world. So a nice dark sky. You might be able to see the Milky Way tonight if you were to go out with a telescope. All right, yogis, we're gonna turn this into our pigeon on the other side. So you're bringing that leg into your pigeon. Oh, adjusting as you need for your own body. Oh. And breathing. <laughs> Most importantly, breathing. Oh. Maybe not with that so kind of a sound. <laughs> uh. I made that almost a horror movie kind of an idea. Hmm. Breathing in a pleasant way. Hmm. Hmm. All right, yogis. So we're going to take a really big inhale. And take a really big exhale. And then we're going to bring this back leg around for our twist. And again, you adjust your legs the way your body says is okay. Just make sure your sit bones are even on the floor. Sit up tall, lean back, twist, and then bring yourself back to center. Draw that shoulder blade down if it feels okay so that you can let your head roll the other direction. Now, if you want to look over your back shoulder, that's fine. No one's stopping you, yogis. <laughs> Least of all me. And again, the sensation of the lymphatic system stretching is really just a feeling that you're stretching out your skin a little bit. And sometimes, I think I can feel some of the more sensitive tissue in this part of my neck, like my carotid artery, or, oh, <laughs> it might be something else too. Sometimes I've got some interesting sensation there. <sighs> Dang, one more big breath. And then we're gonna level the head Come out of the twist. Oh. All right, unwind your legs. I'm gonna turn around so that you can see me. <laughs> oh. 
I am currently in my house in peak um, pet shenanigans time. So there, you might hear all kinds of interesting noises <laughs> as my small furry creatures get into things. Okay, so we're gonna take the feet into a butterfly shape. Now I'm gonna leave this as a really loose um, shape. It's called, some people refer to this as the star pose. It's kind of a beginning tortoise shape, right? And then we might take this into a tortoise. If you wanna start it with your heels up close to you, that's fine, start it that way. Now lean forward and kick your sit bones out from behind you a little bit. So you get your pelvis to come forward as much as it's willing. And then we're gonna let our back turn into like a little turtle shell. And for some of us, this is gonna be plenty of sensation here. Ooh. So we'll take a couple deep breaths. Just kind of embodying this idea of my back being like a turtle shell. So my protection, <laughs> my, um, you know, for turtles, that their spinal vertebrae are in their shell. If you've ever had an opportunity to see a turtle shell that a turtle has left behind, like this, they have spinal vertebrae just like this, but they're just embedded into the um, strong bony tissue of their shell. And so when we do a turtle pose or a tortoise pose, the idea is that our back becomes this sort of sense of or um, place of protection. Now, if you want to take this further towards the tortoise, you're going to take one arm underneath each leg and you might widen out the feet. Okay. Some people can put the arm under and then wrap the hand behind. And that is an opportunity if your um, anatomy will allow for that. My arm, especially my left arm, does not do that. So I bring the hand around the ankle that way. Okay. And then I bring my feet a little closer together. And so there's a little bit of a pinning of the shoulders, a little bit of a pinning of the upper body. And when we let this go, the idea is that it will feel nice. <laughs> so you're going to figure this out. One of the potential side effects to all of us protecting each other by being in our homes is that sea turtles have been able to breed a little more unencumbered and have been laying more eggs and there may take a big breath release your arms rinse out your shoulders and then we're going to inhale and come all the way up there may be an increase in their numbers later this year oh, as more little baby hatchlings are able to emerge across the world i think i love that idea <laughs> The Native American people um, call, the um, North American Native people call um, the Earth Turtle Island, or North America in particular, Turtle Island. This idea, if you've ever seen um, a snapping turtle, in the wintertime they kind of nestle down into the mud in the bottoms of ponds, and they can pretty much chillax down there <laughs> for the winter might come up occasionally. But when they do emerge, there's often dirt on the top of their shell. There's, you know, like some turf <laughs> that they've grown in some aquatic plants and so uh they sort of look like a continent <laughs> a little fiercely <laughs> so we're going to take the legs out into this dragonfly shape and we're going to do one leg at a time so if you would like to you can bend one knee in as we do the other leg so you're going to turn towards one leg and fold over it just start with a forward fold we're going to shift this up a bit but just pausing here, and then we're gonna sort of roll to the side and roll out. And you're experimenting with the sensations that your back is offering you. So there might be more stretch in the front or more stretch in the back, depending on the angle. Now, if your elbow can come to your thigh or can come down to the floor, you can certainly do that. You can nestle a block in beside you, rest your elbow on the block. You can also rest your hand on your um, or your head in your hand to create less strain in your neck. Now, I like to press the elbow down so that I can engage my core with that little bit of extra support. And then I'm gonna take this arm up and over the ear, looking up and looking down and looking up and looking down. And I'm gonna let my head hang to the side so that I give this side of my neck just a little bit of attraction. You might wanna turn your head a different direction, okay? So I'm pressing my elbow actively into the block or into the floor or into your thigh, whatever you've got. 
so that I can use that just as stabilizing to recruit more of my abs to lengthen. I'm almost, it's like I'm trying to stretch myself with my abdominal muscles. Last big breath here. And then I'm gonna take this arm oh, and drag myself out of there. Oh. And pause, because one side is gonna feel a little different than the other. And we want the spine to kind of gently reabsorb fluid before we do the other side. It only takes a little bit. Like I'm start already starting to feel my spine come into a more neutral place. One more breath will do it. Okay, so then I'm gonna turn this way. And when I turn this opposite direction, I'm gonna just adjust a little bit. I'm gonna take that sit bone back a notch more, just so it kind of aims me in that way. And again, you can bend this leg, okay? So starting by coming forward and feeling that out, and then we're gonna decide how your elbow's gonna rest. Is it gonna rest on the floor, on your thigh? Or are you gonna put a block under it? I need a little more height for this side. And then we're gonna roll the chest open <laughs> and roll it back. Roll it open. Oh, see where that lands you? There might be some tissue in here that feels a little tender, so you're paying attention. So for me, right about there feels good. And then I'm gonna start to lengthen back and I'm gonna add that arm over. Okay, I might look up and look down, just feeling the neck up. <laughs> and down and again I'm gonna choose this kind of halfway place and let the head kind of hang to my side things are starting to open up for me a little bit so I'm gonna adjust that shape root into the sit bones root into the arm and oh, use your abdominal muscles and your spine or um, spine muscles to stretch yourself out to the side a little taller so we're not lifting the hip up off the ground we're stretching through the center line of the torso. <laughs> Two more breaths. Mm. Last one. All right, we're coming up. Oh, <sighs> that feels good. All right, yogis, we're gonna roll down onto our back. So to do that, I'm gonna bring my blanket with me because I wanna put it under my thighs. For you, it might be a little chilly in your house. It was a little cold over the night. Um, you can put the blanket over you. So I'm gonna turn this direction. I'm gonna put that guy under there and nestle it in. And then ugh, I'm gonna roll it down onto my back. Now, once I'm here, I'm not quite ready to stretch out yet because my back has been in some funny shapes. So, <laughs> so oh, fancy shapes. I'm gonna do a little oh, windshield wipers because that does help. And then letting myself one leg at a time kind of stretch out one leg, give it a shimmy. Oh. And then the other leg, finding the space in my tiny little living room <laughs> for both my limbs to stretch out and potentially getting tickled, maybe. And then <laughs> by tiny noses. And then let your arms relax. Oh, you might need a little extra love, a little extra con. <laughs> a little extra cushioning oh. oh my goodness <laughs> hmm let your body relax <laughs> So feel yourself unwind all the places where you might have wound up like around the neck or the shoulders. Ugh. Unwind the jaw and your lips. Pa, pa, pa. Let the soles of your feet and the palms of your hands just relax inward towards the bones. Feel the sweet earth rise up underneath you. Now, maybe you're laying on the floor in your house. The earth is down there somewhere, y'all. So imagine if she could just reaching up through the floor and kind of cuddling you in the sweet embrace of the planet. The earth supports us in so many ways through food to eat. through growing beautiful plants to provide oxygen to breathe, through just the right amount of sunlight to produce some of the vitamins that we need.
Taking a moment to just feel yourself in harmony with the planet. So there's a movement out there in the world. We're at 11 o'clock every day, whatever your time zone. You take a moment to feel gratitude for the love and support you have around you, whether that's coming from the earth or your family or from your own inner light of being or all of the above. <laughs> feel gratitude for what is. And then send out a prayer for healing and health for all beings. Lokas. All beings. And then one last picture in your head is the earth as a beautiful garden, like all of the places of the earth repaired and healed and lush, a garden for all. Suki no bovantu. Happiness and freedom. <laughs> for all. Now, you can stay here as long as you like, yogis. <laughs> but if you are ready to go about your day, you're going to give yourself a stretch, maybe a banana to each side. Oh, bring yourself in so your knees join you in a little oh, planet-shaped huddle. <laughs> and then I like to roll to my side. Some people rock themselves up. So that's up to you. That's your personal preference. And then you can push yourself up to a seated position. So there's a Buddhist chant, uh, Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu, which means may all beings be happy and free. And free being, you know, free of carry, free of um, worry or um, care, you know, um, anxiety, right? That's the freedom. The freedom is within. <laughs> freedom is always within. And so if you care to join me, take one big breath. Loka samasta suki no bhavantu. We'll do it one more time. Loka samasta suki no bhavantu. May you be happy and free. Namaste, beautiful yogis. <laughs>